Hey, so today we're gonna do another payment gateway integration video. This time we're gonna do MasterCard Gateway's host session integration approach. I'll just jump straight to the end result and show you what it looks like. On the left side, we got a dummy website. This is a skateboard shop. You add your items to the cart and then you go to the cart. Here's your checkout page. Here you can just enter your card information. You get your payment results. This is what we wanna achieve and i'm going to show you how to do it this is the official guide for host session implementation the step starts here we're going to go ahead with implementing the first two creating the session and then updating the session but first i'm going to show you what those apis look like on postman so this is the create session api you send create session request you get a session id this session id is basically a payment information container and this container is now empty so we gotta fill that container with some information with some information about the order so i do that in the update session request here there you go i send the request now this session id has the order information now this now the client side can use this session id to collect the card information and add it to the payload here i'll show you that later but first we're going to go ahead and implement create session and update session apis and node.js here on the left to do that you don't have to start from scratch you can just go ahead and postman and click on this code symbol here and it's going to give you a code sample you can just copy that and use it in your code so after you do that you're going to need to modify some things that were hard the most important things to look out for are hard-coded values like for example amount and currency and ids you want to make sure to get those from the uh, api request itself so you do that just like this request body and the name of the parameter which the amount will be passed in so it's going to be just amount here in create session i'm going to need to get my session id and i'm going to change to use the uh, try catch notation instead Okay, so just to explain here again what I'm doing, I'm uh, sending a request using Axios library to the gateway for creating the session. I'm using this endpoint. I'm using a post request to create the session. Then after that, I get the session ID. On the update session request, I take that session ID and I append it on the endpoint itself. The same endpoint from before, but with a put request and I pass the information that I want to update in the session, the amount of currency ID reference. So let's run that emulator and see how that works. Okay, I'm gonna show you here in Postman, a sample request. There you go, it returns the session ID just as planned and I wanna show you the content of that session ID. I can do that using a get request, so get session here. If I get the information for the session, I should see $12 USD. Okay, great. So this works. They create session update session request. I'm going to go ahead and deploy it to production and move on to the next step. Okay, so we just finished step one, creating the session, and then we updated with the order information in step two. Now we're going to work in step three, which is updating the session with the card information using the session.js library. So we're going to have to import that in our React.js project. If you go up here, there's a sample code that would be very helpful for that. Uh, you can just copy it in your React.js project this way. So start with importing the library in public index.html and right here in the head there's some code for preventing click jacking. You can want to copy that as well. Here, this one. Here. After you copy this, make sure that the domain name matches your domain name for the gateway. I'm using a test domain so that's mine make sure that the sdk version is the same as your backend api version in the backend here i'm using 74 as well and make sure that your merchant id is here as well okay so that's for importing the library now if you go to the store i don't have anything here to collect the card information so we need to do that go back to the sample here there'll be some input fields copy those i'll put it here in the place of uh, pay with card so i'm gonna put it right above it right here and i need to modify this to be to be suitable for a react.js project so i need to add some flashes and the syntax for read only should be like this instead and 
I don't need this button, I already have mine, so I'm gonna use mine instead. This is the basic look, we're gonna modify them later and make them make it, make them look nicer. Uh, but now I wanna show you how to initialize the library. So for that, create a method here called initiate hosted session. And this will take in the session ID that you get from the backend as a parameter. Copy this code, payment session.configure. This is what initiates the library. You're gonna copy this, place it here. To access this library, you need to do window dot the library name. We're gonna go ahead and test this using a, a session ID that we generated manually from Postman. I'll initiate the session here inside use effect so that it gets called as soon as the component is mounted so here i'm going to put my session id that i'm going to get now from uh postman so go to postman uh i have my production endpoint over here i'm going to just use that send and here is a session id put it here in my initiate hosted session call save refresh and i can tell here that my session has been initiated uh, because the field, the way the field looks has changed, but we have callbacks that we can use to make that more obvious. So here, there's a callback for when the library is, initiali is initialized. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just print out the initialization result here. And here right under it, there's a callback that returns the result when the session is updated, which we're gonna do later. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, now let's try again, save. Refresh the page. Now it prints out in the console that the session.js library is initialized. Obviously, I forgot to pass the session ID here in the library, so I sh you should do that. Now it should work, and the warning will not appear. Now we will say, okay, now it works just fine. It says status, okay. Session.js initialized. Okay, so this is what it looks like when we're requesting the session manually. I'm gonna have to build a method here inside use effect that uh, calls the endpoint that we built earlier to request the session and then and then we're gonna pass the session ID here in initiated hosted session method to do this but automatically. So now that we have done that, you can see that everything is getting done here automatically. The session ID is requested from a server and then it's plugged in in the session.js library and the library is initiated. Okay, a couple more steps that are left on the front end side. I just need to change this button, but currently it doesn't do anything. I'm gonna make it update session form when it's clicked so that it collects the card information and then push it to the gateway and update the session with the card information. Go over here to my button. Now it should work. Now let's try it with a test card, see if the session gets updated and what does the library says in response. Putting my test card information, clicking pay, and here in the library I see that the I see that the update was complete. And now the session ID, I can see the session information here and the card information has been collected so this is good we're almost done with the front end side we just need to make these fields look a little nicer than this so luckily the nice thing about this hosted session integration approach is that your fields are customizable so you can just style them however you want to and then they will just look like that so i'll go ahead and do that now Okay, there you go. I'm not the best at styling, but uh, this will do for now. So let's test this out again. Session updated, still working perfectly. Okay, great. Now we're gonna have to create an endpoint that will use the session ID that we got from here and 
create a payment request. So first, I'm gonna show you what it looks like to create a payment request on using the MPJS APIs. This is what a basic payment request look like. I'm gonna just use the session ID that I got from my front end. I'll get that value and just uh, plug it here and pay. Payment sent, payment approved, successful. So this is what we're gonna achieve. So, and he, I'm gonna have to code this here in Node.js. So to do that, we can do that just like before, just click on the code symbol and copy the code sample we have right here. So just paste it here and start cleaning up. Okay, so I just create a random reference to here. All I did is just I create a random reference to plug in the value for a transaction reference for uh, transaction reference parameter, and the same thing here for the transaction ID. I just use a random reference. Here I get the order ID from before, and I use it for my order ID. And here I just send the same data that I get from the server back to my client side when I get the response from the game. So this is this data over here is what's going to be sent back to the client when they call this API. So let's test this out. Okay, here I'm going to generate an ID and create a new session ID from the client side. I get my session ID. I paste it here. Send. I should get the API response from the gateway here. And same thing. Payment is approved. Okay, so I can go ahead and deploy this to production and move on to the next step. Okay, so now I deployed my send payment endpoint to production. I can go ahead and use it in my app. I'll just copy the URL here. Go back to my React.js app, and here inside my hosted session payment session configured call, there is a callback called form session update. Again, uh, we can use this to trigger the payment after the session was updated. So here we can build a method that will call the API that we just deployed and pass the session ID to it and do the payment basically. So let's do, let's do that real quick. Okay, and to get this to work, we need to add two state variables. Uh, we need to add one state variable to store the order ID and another one to st store the payment status. Here I'm using the state variable uh, payment status to store the order status that I'm going to receive from the payment gateway, which is this parameter over here. This is going to tell me if the order is captured. If it's captured, then it means it's successful. The, the card holder has been debited. And if it's anything else, then the order is likely has failed in our use case here. And that's the, um, and that's the state variable that I'm going to use later to set the result page. It's going to show if the payment is successful or failed. Okay, now I can go ahead and use it inside the form session update callback. Okay, so now that everything is in, we can try and pay. There you go, the payment worked. So the payment here returned captured, which means the payment is successful. And for now, I displayed the payment result as an alert that pops up in the browser, but I'm gonna now change it to be a better looking payment uh, receipt. So let's work on that now.
Okay, so we put everything in place now. Uh, what I basically did is that I s used my loading state variable uh, to basically show the payment fields or the result if the uh, if the payment is not loading. So if it if the payment status is new, it's going to show the payment fields. If it's captured or declined, it's going to show the result. This prompt over here. If the payment is loading, then it's going to show this circular progress indicator to show the user that the payment is currently uh, underway. Okay, so all this in place. Let's try it out to see if it works. Okay. Here's the loading. And the payment is successful. Here's the message. Okay, so now it works successfully. Okay, now let's try a failed scenario. For the failed scenario, you can just put the same card number. Expiry date is going to be 05 instead of 01. Expiry year 39, 100. And pay. There you go, failed. And when I click try again, it's going to refresh the page and show the payment page again. And that's all. This is how we implement hosted session integration approach with MasterCard Gateway. Hope this video was uh, useful. If uh, you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. For the full source code for this project, please check out the Patreon in the description box below. One last note, this implementation uh, demo is just my implementation demo. It's not an official guide by any means. If you want to know the full details of how to implement hosted session with MasterCard Gateway APIs, refer to the official integration guide here. I'll link everything below in the description box. The, this API guide and the API reference uh, here for all the APIs that I've used. That is the official guide. Please look there. And thank you and good night. Bye bye.